Hello friends, welcome back. Today we're going to do the sorted union. We want to write a function that takes two or more arrays and returns a new array of unique values in order of the original provided arrays. In other words, all values present from all arrays should be included in their original order, but with no duplicates in the final array. Final array, got it. The unique numbers should be sorted by their original order, but the final array should not be sorted in numerical order. Uh, so we want to check the assertion. So it's here, I mean, basically, one, is this a unique array? Yes, it's not part of this one. And then three, is this a unique array? Yes, it's not part of this. It's not part of the results yet, so we write three in. Two, it's not part of the, res of the results array, so we write two in. And then five, it's not part of the results array, so we write five in. Two, this is part of the results array, so we don't write two. One is already part of the results array, so we don't write one. Four is um, not part of the results array, so we don't write four. Two is part of the results array, we don't write two. One is part of the results array, so we don't write one. And so this is just sort of, um, I don't know, some sort of a sorting question. So first off, we should have our the final array. Um, I don't like using that. Let's let the uh, result or the final um, collection be equal to an empty array. Um, now let's console.log. Let me see. We're going to do arguments, right? So we want to get the, all the. We want to get these arrays in order. They're passing in array, but this should more be like collection. I don't like the idea of saying that you pass in collection or pass in a ARR when it's actually a collection of arrays. It's not accurate. So I'm just going to put final collection here. And also let's let this equal, um, let result equal our thing. So if we console.log the result, we can see what we're working with. So right now we're returning this final collection with an empty array. And so, um, but in here we're console logging the arguments. And so what we really want is an array of the arrays, right? And how do we do that? So we go um, objects dot uh, values of arguments. Cool. So now this is what we're working with. And so with this one, we could create a nested loop, right? We could just say, um, we want to iterate through each of these and in order, get the arrays. Um, so the best thing to do that, well, we'll start it with a for loop. So for we're going to let i equals zero, i is <clears throat> less than uh, the values Let's say, and we want to let this equal to our values. Oops. I mean, we could just, yeah, let's pass this in here for now, and then we'll refactor it later. i is less than values, and then i plus equals 1. And now if we console.log our <laughs> object argument values at position i, we're going to get, oh, let's get rid of this one. Oh, we need to do this one dot length. I'm going to expand this so it's a little bit clearer. Then we're passing it through. And so our um, object values is one, three, two, one, three, two, but we're doing it in order now. So we've got these ones, we're iterating through them. And we don't need to console log the result right now. So, um, yeah, object of values. Now, object, having this in here, I just want to refactor this now because this is um, having all this object of values is annoying. So we want to say, let um, values equal the object of values. And then in here, we can say values. And then in here, we can say values. Cool. And so now we're working through each of these. And what we want to do now is um, iterate through them. We want to make it a nested loop, right? Because we want to be able to go through this one, and then this one, and then this one. So we're going to do a nested loop. So we'll go for let j equal zero. Uh, j is less than um, values at ij. <laughs> and then uh, j plus equals one. And now we could console.log all values at ij. Oh, this needs to be dot length. And we can console log the values at ij. And oh, this just needs to be at i. 
Okay, so now instead of console logging here, I'm going to undo that one. And now what we're doing is we're just going one, three, two, five, two, one, three, two, five, two. So we're going through and it's printing out the numbers in order. Um, so yeah. Uh, let's see here. What could I say about this? Instead of saying values at I, we could say um, array. Nah, we'll just leave it like that for now. So now that we're iterating through, well, we know our final collection. So what do we want to do? We want to write the value to the final collection if it's not part of it, right? So values at IJ, initially it's one. Um, if the final collection, if does the final collection have an index of the values at IJ? Um, so each of these are rendering out negative one, right? Because we're, the final collection doesn't have anything in it. And so we can use this as our conditional statement. So if the final collection index of values is uh, equal to negative one, meaning it's not there, it's not part of the results array, then we want to um, do the final collection dot push the values. Oh, and now we want to just uh, console log the result. Okay, one, three, two, five, four. One, three, two, five, four. This will probably pass the test. Awesome. Um, now let's uh, think about refactoring, right? Um, it's always makes sense to refactor. Um, we could call this um, our groups. Gr uh, this we could call we could let this one be uh, our group of uh, groups, and we could set that equal to values at i. group of groups. That makes it so that it's more explicit, right? If we were to um, console.log our group of groups, we would see that that's, this is, this is a group of groups, right? Uh, uh, groups. Group of groups, group of groups, group of groups. So that makes it so that, you know, I think that it's a little bit more explicit. We've got, uh, we, we, even if, well, I guess if there was only one array in here, we would only have one group of groups. So, um, yeah, I think that makes sense. I like to do this because I think that it makes values at I and J. This doesn't make a lot of sense to me. So, like, um, you know, if you're reading through code, sometimes it makes sense to make things a little bit more verbose. Um, people who just like to add, like, one letter to mean something, it makes it so that the code becomes uh, slightly meaningless to me. So we want to say, we want to let... Um, our uh, individual values, that would be equal to our groups of groups at position J. And then um, instead of saying positions at IJ, we can just pass in our individual values. See, and it works exactly the same way, but when you, when you read this code, you're like, okay, final collection, and then we got, we, okay, we, we've, we've set our values equal to the arguments, the values of the argument being passed in, so we know that it's coming from there, and then we're going to iterate through our values, and we're going to get groups of groups, okay? And those are equal to each of our individual values of, of our groups. And then we're going to iterate through our groups, so we know we're going through, and we're getting individual values. And then if our final collection um, has an index of where our individual value is equal to negative one, meaning if does our final collection not have this, then our final collection, we push in the individual values. And then at the end of everything, we return our final collection. And I think that makes sense. Um, another thing is we're working with arrays here, right? So we could do we could be doing for each. So instead of saying values dot length, we could have um, values dot for each, and then we could do a function. And then uh, instead of saying a uh, setting group of groups here, we could set this here, and then we wouldn't need this guy, and we could pass our for loop into here. Um, yeah, we'll get rid of this guy. Or 
Oops. We want to set this guy here and this guy here. That guy's there. <coughs> Yeah, I missed this up somehow. For a group of groups. For a group of groups. Let J equal J is less than group of groups. Yeah, and I think I just messed up and I accidentally took that out. Okay, cool. And so now this is working. Now we're using a higher order function in order to get this. And you'll notice the code is a little bit more cleaned up. We don't have all that J stuff. We don't have to re... Um, uh, define variables, uh, so it's a little bit cleaner. Uh, but you know what? We can do it again um, right here. We can go uh, for each, <clears throat> and then we can just take of our groups of groups um, dot each, and then instead of saying all this J stuff, we could just go uh, function, and then in here we can put individual values. Right? And then we can put this if statement in here. And then we just get rid of all this stuff. Oh, we still need that stuff right there. Cool. And now we're still getting the right answer. And now our individual values are being passed in. So if our final collection of individual values is equal to negative 1, um, another way that you can say individual values is equal to negative one is you can, instead of saying that, you can just say not equal to. Ooh, index of individual values. Hmm. Maybe you can't do that. Okay, anyways. So now we've got a much smaller function by using the for each loops, right? Uh, another way we can do this, um, we know in ES6, we don't need to say function. We can just use these arrows, which cause it so that we can... Um, uh, yeah, clean up our code a little bit more. We don't need that word function in there twice. Um, yeah, I mean, you, we can say, uh, we could make this a single line, though I'm not a big fan of this idea because, I mean, it doesn't make sense to have these functions where, where, your, where your code runs all the way off the page. It's better for me to just make, keep it readable like this. And I would use shift tab in order to do that like that, uh, to uh, detab a line. And so, yeah, this is actually uh, much cleaner. Um, another thing is instead of, um, you know, setting the final collection, like here, I'm fairly certain that, mm, no, no, I think we need to keep defining it on the outside. There's probably a way to implicitly return it. Like if we were to go to like return and then just not put final collection in here. But, uh, oh, we could probably do it with a map function. And that would be another way to even, uh, to, to do this a little bit more. Hmm. It's, we're not getting a result. What's going on here? Nothing is happening. Oh, I've got the return here. I still want to use the for each value. Okay, so we're still passing the test, and this is all refactored. Um, yeah, individual values. So, yeah, I think that this is a good one. This is a good way to stop at it. I'm sure that there's probably some other ways to do this, some more explicit ways. Um, but the, re the reason that I'm talking about it and then refactoring from the original with the big fat function things down to this ES6 stuff is because this stuff is the way that we're writing, um, you know, applications now. Like when you get into React, you're going to be seeing a lot of these arrow functions and you're going to see implicit returns and you're going to want to be able to understand this at a core level. So I'm hoping that by me going through this and um, discussing it this way, it makes it so that you learn to code a little bit more effectively. So we're in the test, they pass. Hope you guys enjoy this one. We'll see you in the next lesson.